Hello again from Our Lady of Peace Church. This is Father Rich Tui, the pastor here of our beautiful parish in Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, we are now at uh, the second window of our walk through the windows here at Our Lady of Peace. And remember that all of these on the east side of the main sanctuary are the Old Testament. So we've gone from creation, the first window, to now to Moses. This great symbol of really the Pentateuch, the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament. And um, so this, this window all kind of reflects Moses and images connected to him. The top being his face, something unique with the face of Moses here at Our Lady of Peace is you see these two lights coming out of his forehead, almost like horns. And this is a kind of a classic element of our uh, history is that over the years in different translations, the, Moses, when he came down off of Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments, which are the stone tablets, the second symbol in the window, um, that his face was radiant with light. And in some of the translations, that, that was uh, interpreted as horns. And so very often Moses is shown with horns, the most classically the great uh, Moses that Michelangelo did, that's in Rome in the Church of St. Peter in Chains. It literally shows Moses with horns, and different artists have done that because of this confusion with the translation, but it was about the radiance of his face that he had been transformed, having encountered God in a unique way on Mount Sinai to receive those 10 commandments, which are the classic image of the Old Testament, the old law, the old covenant, uh, which Moses received and represented and took the people of Israel to a new step with as he took them out of uh, Egypt into the promised land. And so the third image takes us back before uh, that, that journey, it's the call of Moses, the burning bush. It's, a, it's actually a really beautiful window, and it represents vocation and the call that Moses had. So I'd like to read uh, for you out of the book of Exodus. You can find all the stories about Moses in the first five books, but specifically most fully in Exodus. This is taken out of Exodus chapter 3. Meanwhile, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And remember that this is happening after he had been born and raised in Egypt by the Pharaoh and their family. He had run from Egypt because he had killed an Egyptian who killed the Hebrew slave. And now he's out in the desert and he had married uh, the daughter of Jethro. There was an angel of the Lord appeared to him in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. So it goes on to say uh, the rest of God's call of Moses and then of course he eventually says yes and goes back to help lead the people out of the slavery of the, uh, Egypt and slavery there to the freedom of the Holy Land. And we know that uh, Moses is a prefigurement, a type for Jesus. We call Jesus the new Moses. That Mo Jesus doesn't lead us um, out of the slavery of Egypt, but from the slavery of sin and death and leads us to the freedom of being the sons and daughters of God. And so Moses is such an, a, an important figure in the Old Testament, really establishing the foundation for what Jesus would build on. And that's reaffirmed when we see the transfiguration story in the Gospels, when Moses and Elijah, in fact, appear with Jesus um, on the Mount uh, of Transfiguration, Mount Tabor. We just heard that gospel a few weeks ago. And uh, Moses is there with Elijah. So Moses representing the law, really a significant element of the whole Old Testament. But I think he's a great one to think about um, vocation. When we think of the burning bush, the song I'd like to recommend for you today is a song when I was asked to pick a song that could represent my vocation and my life, my journey with God back in probably about 15 years ago in my early priesthood. And I thought a lot about it in different songs I was aware of. And I landed on the book, the song called Magnificent Obsession by Stephen Curtis Chapman. And in that song, it talks about wanting God to be my consuming fire. And so this idea that when we realize God is that fire of love, we're drawn to him, we're called by him. And as we are then consumed by that fire, we become that, that radiance and that light for others like Moses was. As he encountered God in such unique, special ways in the burning bush on Mount Sinai, that he was transformed and he couldn't help but show the living life of God and his love. And that just emanated through all of his being. And that song, Magnificent Obsession, just reinforced for me how much I wanted God to be my passion 
as, as we know, we are his. Uh, we are his passion. We are his love. He's willing to die for us. And I wanted him to be ours, our consuming fire. And, um, and that's what Jesus, Moses knew. And certainly uh, Jesus brought to us most fully. So I, I hope you can listen to that song and keep continue to grow in allowing God to be our consuming fire, our magnificent, magnificent obsession, and that we will follow in that tradition of Moses. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. God bless.